This is the most beloved and feared movie star dinosaur of all time, Tyrannosaurus rex. But what if I told you that this singular creature was actually three? A recently published paper makes a controversial claim that T. rex is actually three different species. And the paleontologists behind it have opened up a can of prehistoric worms that raises three existential questions. What's the true identity of this tiny armed predator? Why is it so difficult to decipher the past? And how do privately owned specimens, which are part of this study, impact our ability to do research? Let's dig into how the proposal to dethrone T-Rex gets at all that, starting with the question of identity. My first call was to Scott Persons, one of the proponents of the hypothesis that T-Rex is actually three different dinos. The team he worked with looked at three different lines of evidence in 30 T-Rex specimens, bone girth, the number of teeth, and where the fossils were found. We picked these three because they were traits that had been identified previously uh, by other researchers and known to potentially be informed. When they looked at these three lines of evidence together, Scott said that the girthiest dinos tended to be in the older, lower layers of rock. Meanwhile, the thinner ones tended to be higher up in the more recent layers. That hints at T-Rex evolution towards slimmer, more agile creatures. They called the girthiest or most robust of animals T. Imperator, or the Emperor. That is the lower uh, group, the older ancestral form. T. rex was somewhere in the middle, and the Queen, or T. regina, was the slimmest and most agile of all. As for the teeth, T. Imperator, we think, has got two sets of little tiny chisel-like teeth uh, in the front of its lower jaw. And then the two more derived species have reduced that down to just one such tooth set. So the emperor has the two, and then the, mm -hmm. it's two descendants. The king and queen have got one. Some paleontologists are inviting, calling the proposal's evidence weak and unconvincing. T-Rex expert Thomas Carr, for instance, told me that many of the differences detailed in the paper could be chalked up to differences in age, gender, or size. He also said there was too much overlap between the three proposed species, and that T-Rexes are known for losing front teeth in their lower jaw as they age. Scott acknowledged that there needs to be a lot more research before T-Rex is formally dethroned. But wherever it is that we land in terms of T-Rex's true identity, the debate is also interesting because it brings up that second fundamental question about why it's so difficult to decipher the past, especially when all you have to go on is the bones of animals that died millions of years ago. Getting an animal's identity right is important for understanding how biodiversity has shifted over time, plus how life recovers after periods of mass extinction. T-Rex roamed the Earth right before the dinosaurs were wiped off the planet, probably because of an asteroid impact. There's a lot of intelligent inferences going on. That's Eileen Woodward. She covers dinosaurs for the Wall Street Journal, and she studied human evolution. When you find a human ancestor in South Africa on an island in Indonesia, and it's similar to Homo sapiens or similar to Neanderthals, but not quite the same, do you lump those together? Or is it a new species? Researchers who lump are more conservative, whereas so-called splitters... Sometimes they find a new species at, at every dig site. They sort of take these tiny variations between individuals to indicate that these individuals belong to different species. How we define species can also evolve as new evidence becomes available. Island told me that since T-Rex starred in the Jurassic Park movies in the 1990s, the number of specimens available for study has grown. And the more information that we have, the more we're able to sort of reevaluate pre-existing notions about T-Rex. The future availability of that information is also what makes this three species proposal controversial. Paleontologists like Thomas think that the dinosaur fossil trade is unethical, so they won't study dinosaur specimens that are privately owned. And the new study includes privately owned fossils. It's the fact that half the sample size of T-Rex is actually in commercial or private hands right now. That's the big problem. We could easily have a sample size of 100 specimens, but we don't. He says that threatens a cornerstone of science, the ability to replicate other researchers' work. You may have heard of Stan, the dino that got sold at auction for a whopping $32 million. It was part of Scott's study. After the researchers studied it, it went missing for a while. Then, in late March, we learned that Stan was going to a museum in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism said Stan would continue to contribute to education and research and inspire future explorers. But 
We still don't know if that fossil is owned by the museum. We don't know if it's owned by an individual. So the green light hasn't switched on for that skeleton. The first T-Rex skeleton was discovered over 100 years ago. And Thomas told me that it could take another 100 years to gather enough data to really know whether there are multiple species of Tyrannosaurus. He and other paleontologists don't buy the new proposal, but Thomas told me that overall, he sees it as a good thing because asking provocative questions is how science moves forward. He and Scott expect that in the future, paleontologists will be paying more attention to the possibility of species differences, and that's not a bad thing. 